Swamiji, now you. Swamiji, you can unmute and start, please. Right. Here we are. Good evening and namaste, everybody. And excuse me, there was a little technical snag and I had to set it right, so I'm a bit late. And when we talk about being late or being on time, the question of time comes into the picture. And this evening we are here to talk about time. The topic that we have chosen is breaking the shackles of time. What's this breaking the shackles of time? Is it about breaking all the clocks in our houses, in our offices? <laughs> Is it about breaking the wristwatches and other timepieces? That is ridiculous. That is obviously not the meaning of breaking the shackles of time. Then what is it? Let us clarify this right in the beginning. Let us make it very clear that we are not at all talking about chronological time. The clock, the timepiece, the wristwatch, or any other way, we keep track of minutes, hours, seconds, microseconds, nanoseconds, picoseconds. All these are chronological time. We are not talking about any bondage that is caused by the clock time. Everyone, I suppose, knows here that the bondage caused in human life is by psychological time. So we need to examine that. What is psychology? Everyone has a rough idea for sure. In fact, one of the definitions of psychology is the study of human behavior. But then the human behavior, that is behavior of you and me, is the outcome of our thinking. If I feel fear, I behave in a certain way. If I am confident, If I am very severe, will be another. Therefore, psychology very often is the understanding. So in the domain of psychology, the operation of the human mind, there is this issue of time. Surprised to know that Shankaracharya a teacher of Advaita Vedanta, in one of his commentaries on the Upanishads, had said that the ways of the wise are indeed very difficult to understand. And he says, the ways of the wise, the wise ones, are like how a fish in water does not leave behind any marks as it swims in the water. Birds flying in the sky do not leave behind any marks. We would not call in either case the matter footprints. Neither fish have feet nor birds. Birds do have, but they don't fly with their feet. Maybe we should coin a word wind prints. But let's not bother about what word we shall use. Neither birds in the sky nor fish in water leave behind any marks as they move. But the people with ego, the people with sense of high and low, I am successful, somebody is not, or somebody is successful. I am a failure. This is psychology. This is where the mind 
comes to a judgment of how good we are or how bad and in that process you know marks are left residue is left in our psyche shankaracharya says the way of the wise is like how birds fly in the air or fish move in water <laughs> many of you know shakuni of mahabharata <laughs> that very clever and somewhat wicked mama but the word shakuni in sanskrit first of all means a bird shakuni naam iva akashe jale vari charasya va padam yatha na drishyeta tatha jnanavatam gatihi is a shloka that adi shankara quotes in his commentary on mundaka upanishad how do we connect it to this challenge of time in this evening's discussion when there is breaking of the shackles of time our mind will have no residue we live in the present we do not unwarrantedly unnecessarily get pressed down by memories of some hurt or some failure likewise without a functional reason without an actual requirement we do not go into what could happen tomorrow i have to add this clause unless warranted because if you have to receive somebody tomorrow at 10 am at the airport and uh, you live an hour away from the airport you need to plan you need to think about how you may start about 9 am and reach the airport by 10 and your guest comes out at about 10:15 with a broad smile you welcome him or her to your town this thinking of future is warranted in order to be functional you need to have this you know thinking of future as well as learning something from the past that is out of the question but what is called psychological memory and its projection into psychological future is psychological time interestingly in the very sublime teachings of j krishna murthy whom we call krishna ji he carries three things together time self and thought in fact one of the really thought provoking revelations by him or call it observation by him is thought self and time are one therefore to crack the code today to break the shackles of time as we put it we may right away take a look at time as it relates with the self as it relates with thought we have already said we are talking about psychological time therefore thought is the ground thought is the medium just thought is the very stuff in which psychological time appears it is thought which makes us feel oh i have a long way to go i don't have much hope of making it in whatever context some people are frustrated or they have lost all hope about making certain amount of money some others are very disappointed that they could not get certain amount of fame who is saying that you need to have so much of fame so much of money so much of bank balance this is called conditioning a mind that is d 
position in a certain way the house and this man has <clears throat> just himself at home even his wife has left him and gone away let us say i am alone i don't need four bedroom house but i look at the other man and suppose i compare i feel low i feel he is successful i am not thing is terribly wrong with that thinking so arise shoka and moha these are two indian words used for sorrow and delusion of india that these support each other if you have sorrow in your bosom sorry to say you cannot have very clear thinking your thinking gets affected it will have moha delusion and when you are deluded you are confused you are into some illusion alas you will not be able to <clears throat> be happy or even some short periods you may feel happy in some dreaming in imagining that you will become you know this or that but it is short lived very soon alas you will be going to the other end just a while ago you are on cloud 9 imagining the heights of glory that you are you know uh, going to reach and now you will be in such ditches so much down feeling very low therefore from a philosophical point of view we would say even that cloud 9 or seventh heaven where you found yourself was no happiness really it was a mere fancy in this in this sense we would say that psychological time which breeds or which thrives on the soil of thought actually is the substance of which the self is made the self the separate self obviously where i am different from you she is different from me and so on you me he she and so on this idea of separation and isn't it true that in the context of the separate selves there is comparison there is fear there is frustration there is anxiety or there is unending regretting so we need to take up the question how under the sun we can ever break the shackles of time friends can we see the close connection between thought self and time we get a key to this solution to solve this problem it is through such alertness it is through being guard on the movement of the thought that self can be under time can be ended thought can be put to its real place but let me caution myself and all <laughs> this cannot be visualized as a technique because technique itself is on the axis of time we are trying to break the shackles of time and how can the means be different from the end in philosophy we realize a certain truth as we go higher and higher the means itself becomes the end 
interestingly in morality also great men like mk gandhi had maintained the position as the means so the end gandhi was very emph- emphatic you cannot use a wrong means to achieve a right end his philosophy was right means to right end good means to good end don't try to establish peace using violence he said not that i am trying to completely endorse gandhi planning or without planning if i quote somebody let me tell you it's more to generate some reflection in the matter it's up to you to take gandhi as right or to take gandhi as wrong it's up to you to look at gandhi as a great idealist who was endowed with certain other skills or gifts or certain will power and uh, he then got to be known around the world he got known got to be known as the mahatma or father of the nation and so on it's up to you or some of you may actually accept him as someone who had some deep insight into life so my purpose of quoting him is to give an example how there has been certain uh, wisdom which would say means and end cannot be different therefore a technique where we say step 1 i will do this step 2 i will do that and then step 3 something else so step 1 step 2 step 3 coming one after another is on the axis of time not just chronological time they involve psychological time i have done this i say to myself now i will do that i say to myself and no only one last step remains for me to do i say to myself so do you see how the i is kept up and active in exercising a technique whereas the matter of breaking the shackles of time involves diluting or really speaking undoing the self you cannot reinforce the you saying oh, i'm going to speed up my car therefore i am pressing my brakes pressing the brakes and accelerating the car are opposed to each other therefore some method some technique and some you know steps of a large ladder etc are rather immature thinking therefore how do we we are we are so used to asking how do we <laughs> therefore here also we bring how do we but i am raising it more to show that the question how do we break the shackles of time itself needs to be questioned question the question doubt the doubt or as someone said doubt the doubter who is it who is doubting who am i i have sorrow rather than getting lost in the details of the sorrow is it possible for me to question who has sorrow and as the mind says i have sorrow let me again ask who am i have i taken myself for granted have i presumed me to be such and such of this much worth of this much value wanting in certain areas and strong in certain other areas suppose i presume that i know myself i am afraid that presumption about who i am 
is the antithesis of inquiry. In inquiry, we are questioning any idea, any concept that we would have about who we are, right? Thus, we talk about time loosening its hold upon us and that cannot be arrived at by a planned practice. Therefore, more we see the limitations of the approaches which hold good for the phenomenal universe or they hold good for the functional world. You need to put together a mechanical clock. There are steps. Begin with certain gross steps and then do the final adjustments. In a million things in life, there are steps. Driving a car, writing a, an email, let us say. Even if I were to write an article on breaking the shackles of time, there are steps. I take, nowadays we hardly use pen or pencil. We open our laptop, we turn the machine on, and we begin. All right, let me write one paragraph defining what is psychological time. In the second paragraph, let me show its connection with thought, with self. And in the third paragraph, let me go into limitations of techniques. In this way, I can visualize steps in writing an article. But these are all, excuse me, some functional details. But I, even as I am doing something or I am sitting quietly, if I were to keep an eye on how the inner mind is working, how within me could I, there could be certain pain or certain fear, keeping an eye on these would mean the inquiry is set in motion. Inquiry is like a flame. Therefore, some places Krishnaji has used the expression, the flame of attention. It's a flame and the flame burns away what comes into its ambit. The flame of attention would burn away and with both poetic and some truth in it, completely burns all our hurt, all our pride, all the residue of the past without leaving behind any anything behind, without a residue. The old residue is gone, no new residue is left behind. I would once more say there is poetic beauty here, but we should not settle for poetry. We must actually understand how attention, which is not thinking, which is not putting one thought after another. Attention is not analysis either. In the analysis of anything, there is an analyst. I take myself to be qualified to analyze a certain problem. And moreover, as I begin to analyze, I also look at myself as going by certain, probably you know, widely approved, widely accepted method of analysis. Nowadays, in research around the world, they talk of research methodology. In fact, sometimes certain experts in some subjects, when they travel abroad, they have a lot of insights into the, their subject, let us say. But uh, in some Western universities, even as they try to share their insights, into that subject, 
they are asked by the academicians there we don't want some mystical statements that has to be in the framework in the format of research methodology that we have defined sometimes some insights of an eastern thinker could be most wonderful but in what we call today's science today's research methodology of modern universities it may not fit so well in their eyes what the eastern scholar is saying could seem to be just hypothesis and the eastern thinker says no this is not a hypothesis i'm speaking from my experience i'm speaking from what has its own rationale and let me not go into details at this moment i can another time with some examples but then there is found to be a gap a gap between what one mind looks at as acceptable and uh, what another mind looks at as unacceptable so when we look at the way the flame of attention operates it's um, it has a certain poetic and mystical quality at the same time it is is a phase of some old story uh, we have reason to believe that some is some certain residues of the past just vanish in quiet observation not deliberate observation therefore there comes up the word passive awareness sometimes you may wonder why this passive choiceless awareness because the moment is is active and moment you exercise choice you the agent you the doer you the thinker you the analyst enter the scenario therefore we use the word in passive awareness by passivity please note we in no way mean some kind of laziness or tardiness generally when somebody is passive in lot of other contexts that passivity is nothing else than uh, he is having lost interest in the subject so he comes to the office takes his chair and just uh, orders uh, you know a cup of tea after another cup of tea doesn't do anything that then is why is he not active why is he passive there the word passive is not a complimentary word but please note the difference maybe making this remark i'll conclude my presentation there is this passive awareness this choiceless awareness which is no way near laziness or being i know lagging behind what is that word laid back it's, it's nowhere near being laid back on the contrary there is intelligence operating and this intelligence stays passive doesn't like to do doesn't want to do anything because the intelligence has seen through the game the moment one is trying to do something one is trying to you know play with thought uh, tinker with thought as we use in the you uh, know laboratory tinkering with something tinkering means you play around and find out more things about how it works or how it operates so but here we don't want to tinker with thought anything you do with thought is the one remains attentive not out of any particular design not out of any particular uh, what is that uh, 
therefore for next 5 minutes i will observe my thought passively <laughs> moment you say i will observe passively you already have constructed you have built you have erected the little self therefore uh, this can be taken up in the question answer session too this passive awareness is one more facet of advanced intelligence in intelligence one is passive when one is in short of intelligence one tries to do something one is active and all this of course high plateau of self observation or why self in the shackles of time happens spontaneously it just happens when we no more are supporting that operation of time which is time and again which is again and again breathing breathing new life into psychological time there is a renewal going on for this illusion called psychological time if only we stop renewing uh, you know this illusion and just don't do anything but stop renewing therefore krishna told asit chandmal one say don't do anything that was the advice given well or you know gurus in general ask the students to do this do that do japa do puja do tirtha yatra to go do this serve people you know, feed the hungry and so on there are a thousand do's and a thousand don'ts in the air in so called spiritual world here was a very unique advice given by j krishna murthy to asit chandmal in mumbai krishna ji said asit for heaven's sake don't do anything which meant your passive awareness will take care of everything but one has to understand what passive awareness actually is all right thank you for your patient hearing and i am uh, uh, hoping to hear some some interesting things added to whatever i submitted through harshad ji and others thank you and namaste everybody thank you dhanan ji for good lecture Arshad Parikh, would you please unmute and say? <clears throat> yes. Are you able to hear my voice? Yeah. Thank you, Swamiji. It is amazing that you can give a talk while moving in a car. <laughs> It is so very difficult <laughs> to really when the car is moving and so much thing happening. and at the same time your mind concentrated <laughs> on speaking uh this topic which you have given breaking the shackle of time it is true that we are bound by time uh, of course chronological time our life exist in chronological time and um, at the most we live about 100 years uh um, in the, in this chronological time but uh, we are also bound by psychological time by thinking and especially after we go through lot of learning academic learning and uh, many words and ideas and we read so much about krishnamurti or the uh, philosophers then he get a kind of a addiction to even the words and uh, this unnecessary thinking goes on and we are not observing it and uh, then it becomes kind of a burden burden of knowledge which we carry so uh, what is required if we really want to be free from psychological time that means thinking maybe we need to stop all this thinking 
itself. And but no, we cannot decide to stop our thinking because thinking will go on whether we like it or not. But when there is a curiosity about the nature of why this thinking is happening, is it possible to observe this thinking uh, through, not through thinking, not through intellect, not through analysis, but just observing how the thoughts are moving. But for that itself, it requires a kind of a freedom to come out from the process of thinking and just watching very, very curiously how the thoughts are arising. And uh, when I tried to do that after reading a book of Krishnamurti, because he said that this sense of I or me, it is coming from thinking. And uh, all our problems is because of this sense of I or me or ego or self, whatever word we, which we use. So if we want to really observe everything, uh, how, whether anger or fear or jealousy, it comes, we need to come out from this plane of thinking and feeling and observe it very, very carefully. And when I tried to do it first time, then my mind really stopped. There was kind of a discontinuity, a silence, and that was a quite a different uh, feeling. So first time I came to know that there is something within us which is different than thinking and feeling. And uh, this thing which Krishnamurti calls choiceless awareness or intelligence, it, it exists within all of us, but it is buried under dense clouds of thinking. And so we are going in the plane of thinking and feeling and from one thought to an, another thought, and there is no discontinuity, there is no silence. So when we become very curious about the whole thing, mechanism of how everything is arising, how even this, what we call I or me arising, because everything is arising from thinking. Uh, so one has to go right at the source of thinking. And uh, if a person is able to do that in silent awareness, and then a person can also get frightened of that state in which there is no thinking because there is no self, no I, it is like a psychological death. But some people feel that this psychological death is a real freedom because in that there is no sense of I, there are no problems. So that is what I felt first time um, uh, when I tried to experiment with what Krishnamurti was saying. And I found that yes, there is something within us which is different than thinking and feeling, which can look at thinking and feeling very, very clearly. So then it became very, very important. Every time I wanted to look at the beginning of a thought, my mind used to become silent. And so this became very interesting because if it is helping you, this kind of looking, then you like to do it more, experiment more. And so many changes started happening in my body and in my brain. And I begin to see things in a different way than the way I looked before coming to Krishnamurti. So there is a different way of looking, a fresh looking without this knowledge, memory and uh, experience and all that. Uh, one can really look, the, our campus, Iowa State was very, very beautiful 
But because I was so much occupied with my own problem, I never really looked at the swan going in the lake and the colors of the trees in autumn, in October, when the beautiful colors on the trees and everything became very, very beautiful. So I think we have to really experiment uh, looking at our own mind, how it works. And if one has to make a lot of effort to do that, then it may, one may get very tired, but one is curious and uh, it is really interesting. Then it becomes effortless. So I feel that that effortlessness of looking at one's own mind is very, very important. And in that, there is a renewal goes on within the brain and the body. And every day you look at the stars or the moon, everything looks very new, fresh. Uh, sunrise, sunset, looking at people, even if you know them, you don't carry so much knowledge with you. So uh, I, this reminds me of this uh, two monks and one girl, they were crossing a river and uh, the girl was not able to cross the river. So one of the monk, uh, he took her in, in his hands and made her cross the river. But the other monk, he kept on thinking about that. And after one hour, that monk said, we are monks, we are not supposed to touch with, uh, girls. Then this monk, he said, I left that girl one hour ago, but you are still carrying her in your mind. So our problems is that we carry a lot of our experiences and the knowledge which we have gathered even from Krishnamurti or Raman Maharshi. So our mind is not free. So only when there is a freedom, we can see even what Krishnamurti says is right or is not right. So there are certain things which I feel that Krishnamurti is making a very um, a remark which is not correct in my view. So because I am able to look at um, my own mind, I can see whether what Krishnamurti says is true or false. I don't accept everything. And also Krishnamurti says, don't accept, find out. So this finding out is the real interesting thing in our life. And if this becomes our hobby, then we don't need to do anything we never feel lonely. We feel, and uh, even if there are some memories there, those memories will not create any negative thinking. There may be thinking, but it may be a positive thinking and that may give you even more energy. So I am not against uh, imagination. Like Krishnamurti says, imagination prevents clear seeing. Yes, but when you make the image not automatic, but your own uh, images, then it, you are not bound to such images, whether you create image about Krishnamurti or Buddha or uh, other great people. Uh, you create it and that is your creation. It doesn't bind you. It's just like a spider doesn't get caught in its own web. But when we are not aware, then imagination can create a lot of illusion and we get caught into this unobserved images and that creates, uh, it prevents us in facing life, the real reality of life. So we need all the memories and knowledge, but that can it, remain uh, silent and use it only when we need this memory uh, of like uh, walking on a street, driving a car and all this, we need all that uh, to book our ticket 
to use internet. We need thinking, we need memory, but the psychological memory of somebody who has said something very unpleasant and we keep on thinking about it and are not able to observe it, then we will get tired of this negative thinking of doing harm to somebody. But on the other hand, uh, when we are aware and we have a good thoughts, it gives us more energy, uh, positive energy. So I don't discard both positive and negative. Positive is very useful. Negative is harmful. Uh, in awareness, we can see what is helpful and what is not helpful. So, uh, of course, this time, psychological time, great people like Ramakrishna or uh, Raman Marshi, when they go into Samadhi, they are not aware of time. They don't know whether it is a daytime or um, evening. And for days, they have lived like that. So that is quite a different uh, level altogether of being free from psychological time, having no sense of uh, time, even chronological time. Though chronological time may be acting, but they are not aware for days. So that we don't need that kind of samadhi, nirvikal samadhi, they call it. What we need is a clear mind, healthy body, healthy mind, and happy, creative life. And we can use our thinking in a proper way. And that is enough, I will say. So, okay, I have said enough thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pradeep Parmaji, please unmute and say. Yes. I am audible, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, today's topic is addressed to selves. Own. Factually speaking, this is addressed to selves. We all are selves. Almost everything has been covered in scheduled chronological time by Chidananji as well as Harshadji, including most of the things about JK and all, almost all his teachings. Now, you have the answers and I have only questions. This breaking sounds like a perfect volitional act, action that automatically becomes a method for others when they listen to this. Now, being in the present could be one obvious answer. Then the question comes, how much is the present? Is there a pure present? For an average human being, how much is the present? Any movement brings time automatically. When we say infrequently, we say that moment to moment. It's a subtle movement, time in time. My question is, do the speakers really think, feel, or see that time is responsible for our problems? Or is it the unfulfilled desire? But one can almost blame time when time per se becomes important. It becomes more important than the actual desire. So time becomes another desire, psychologically, definitely. So time belongs to this domain, psychological time belongs to this domain and is highly subjective. No wonder scientists have somehow realized the reality of an omnijective universe, objective plus subjective. To me, psychological time when I say me, I know what all the things that are talked about, the me, mine, and all that. To me, psychological time is a modified chronological time. Relative 
subjective to the observer, depending on his her conditions. Journey from mechanics through relativity and quantum mechanics and how an interface of physics with biology came as a third revolution. So whether another question is whether one can talk without thinking. In response to Harshad Ji, whether one can talk without thinking, that is one thing. And I'll repeat my one question. Do you really think that time is responsible for our problems? These are the two important questions. Please respond if you can, or if you have the time, if the moving car is still in movement and whatever it is. Thank you so much. Chidananji, would you please give a long reply to it? <laughs> uh, may I speak? Uh, I heard one question. Oh. Can we? Okay. Yes. Please Let Swamiji. Sir, let Swamiji reply the first question only. Yeah. First question, shall I put it again? He remembers that. Let him reply. Please do that. Thank you. Nothing is coming. Sir, uh, Swamiji is not there, sir. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. No. Yeah, yes. Go on, sir. Hmm. Yeah, I hope all can hear me. Yeah. We are where? Yeah. Uh, Pradeep ji asked the question, is it possible to talk without thinking? I don't think it is possible. Talking is backed by thinking, but our topic is about thinking without psychological time. That is, we have connected psychological Nothing coming. No voice, Swamiji. Now you can reply, Arshad, sir. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, is it possible to talk without thinking? Uh, no. Uh, thinking may be there, but it is an effortless uh, speaking happens, uh, which may come from clarity and order. So there may be thinking, but it is not um, coming from bookish knowledge or scholarly knowledge. It, just like when Krishnaji is talking, how the words are coming so effortlessly and he, is, he has not prepared the talk, but everything is coming because there is clarity, there is an order and um, uh, it happens by itself. Just like when somebody asks Krishnaji, why are you talking? Then Krishnaji say, do you ask why a flower blooms. So that kind of talking, which from Krishna Ji, it comes by itself without any preparation and with clarity and order. And such words, whether it is written or 
spoken, it affects some sensitive people. And when they can see that there is something, uh, this person, Krishnamurti, is showing. And when such sensitive people are able to see the same thing within themselves, then they say, yes, Krishnamurti is correct. Otherwise, what a person will keep on asking, what does he mean by that, you know? So when a person asks, what does Krishnamurti mean by that? It means the person is interested, not in, not in looking within, but in order to get the intellectual knowledge of what Krishnamurti is saying. And that, I think it, it becomes a burden. Uh, in my view, that a, a lot of knowledge of Krishnamurti's ideas can become a burden. So one has to discard everything and just look within oneself. And when there is a clarity, then the words will come by itself effortlessly. So yes, thinking is there, but it is not a burdensome thinking. Uh, it, it comes from clarity and freedom. Okay, I finish. Another question also you would like to respond, sir? Yeah, uh, can you repeat? Yeah. I will repeat it. Do, do you really think, feel, or see that time is responsible for our problems? You mean psychological time? No, yeah. we, we, I am not. I, you see, yeah. we yeah. live our life. We don't yeah. do it like this. When we live our life daily, we don't know whether what I'm doing is psychological or whether it is biological or whether it is social or whatever. I am talking of time or is it unfulfilled desire that is responsible for our suffering? Not the time yeah. per se. But one can mm -hmm. always blame time when time per se becomes more important than the actual desire. You see, mm -hmm. time becomes another desire. I must reach in five minutes. What is this? This is called five minutes have become more important than anything else. Yeah, so yeah I understood. You, huh, I understood. You, that is the thing. So time yeah. belongs to this domain. The psychological time is always connected with chronological time. I am moving in a car, whatever it is, but I am not oblivious of the thing that chronological time I am not over. I know that after half an hour, it will reach there and that. It is a combined thing, total. Everything, everything is so beautifully knit together, but we, although we blame intellectual, see, in, intellectually we blame that the questions are, there when intellectually do, don't see inside yourself as if there is inside and outside, which JK has strongly refuted that there is no inside or outside. There is a wave coming inside and on, it's like a wave. So there is no inside and outside. And, and, and human body is a porous body. The entire cosmos pervades through it. What is inside? How much is inside? How much is present? How much is present moment? I am still struggling with these questions, you see. We, we yeah. frequently yeah. use these words that yeah. we have to be in the present, attention, attentive in the present with the least self affecting and all those things. But ultimately, we are the selves listening to, responding also, not questioning which time I am operating in, actually speaking, practically speaking. So these things are there in discussion, certain topics, certain things come up and we explain it beautifully, but that life remains the same. Thank you, Harshadji, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, just one comment what I want to make is that our problems like unfulfilled desires and all that is due to lack of awareness, or intelligence, because when this awareness or intelligence is awakened, it can see everything very clearly. And then all this 
desire to ask questions, to get answers, it will not be there. You want us, you will just see your own questions. And in that seeing, there is something uh, happening, uh, something new. So as long as there is this desire to know, desire to ask questions, it means that there is an unfulfilled desire. And that is, that is the bothering. But when this desire, questions, everything is seen through this awareness, then even those questions, they dissolve and there's only seeing remains. And that's the real beauty of just seeing. You know? And that's why Krishna Ji says, that seeing or perception is the action. Does it raise more question in your mind? Definitely, definitely, son. Yeah. Seeing, okay. seeing with clarity, hmm. with our limited, limitedness of our brain, limitedness of our brain and conditionings, seeing clearly how much what is can be really clear to a person with all these limitations of physical and biological and all those limitations are there with everyone, each one of us. That's why you are addressing individually as well as talking of collectively. So this, is, this cannot be answered so easily. So easily this can never be. Seeing clarity for what? Seeing clarity that this is that. But, but in my limited nests of my brain, mind, everything. This happens. So seeing things as they are, can one, can one with this limitedness and see one things as they are? Yeah. <clears throat> are you asking whether this kind of seeing can be moment by moment, a continuous activity? No. There are times where we don't see clearly and then it creates some problem, but then we be again become awake and see and the thing dissolves. So there is no moment by moment freedom in a continuous way. Problems will come, there may be fear, but then how quick you are to see it, that is, that uh, determines um, the action, which, which is not true thinking. So everything depends on how uh, alert we are to whatever is happening. And when we are not alert, it, like driving a car on the road and even for one or two seconds, you look somewhere, accident will happen, right? So same thing psychologically, when we are not looking something will come and then we, again we see it, it dissolves. So ultimately it depends on our own uh, interest or curiosity uh, or uh, whatever you call it, honesty, look at ourselves as we are, not hiding it, uh, anything under the carpet, not putting a mask and trying to show something else other than what we are. So when we are interested in learning about ourselves as we are, life becomes much without much conflict. Otherwise, there will be what is and what should be. That conflict will remain, you know. Okay, I finish. Siddhananji, would you please make a last comment or should I say goodbye to you? Siddhananji. Yes, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, I was listening to the interaction between Pradeepji and uh, Arshadji. Very fascinating. And uh, in fact, uh, I must once more say that uh, uh, the questions are asked, answers are given. Some of us ask, some of us answer. It doesn't matter who asks and who answers. Questions are asked and answers are given. But what I want to say is, uh, uh, 
these are <laughs> quite profound issues and nobody perhaps can claim to uh, know everything in and out or maybe one knows or maybe one doesn't know you know and someone knowing uh, doesn't mean much to another person unless that person mm-hmm. also discovers you know it's like uh, uh, in in such circle sometimes it is asked with great curiosity do you think x is uh, enlightened do you think y is realized do you think z is illumined ha huh? mm-hmm. etc with great curiosity <laughs> but actually suppose some x is realized y is not enlightened z was so well received by people but actually he was not uh, you know what different does it make to the person asking like, and accept some excitement and to you know satisfying of some curiosity does does somebody being enlightened bring about this person's enlightenment so i'm raising this uh, because in these dialogues also uh, we are i think learning from each other and no matter who is raising the question and who is answering but what is important is in the question and sometimes in the answer in either of them there could be something which touches us deeply and takes us deeper into uh, inquiry more serious inquiry that seems to be very important therefore all i wish to say before uh, uh, leaving this session is uh, these dialogues are very valuable and if we listen very carefully to questions asked by anyone and to answers given by anyone really speaking that listening itself uh, i guess can open up uh, certain avenues i fully agree with harshad ji that in this matter this is intelligence an intelligence is operating and it's so difficult to define what intelligence is we use words like insight intelligence intuition i think there is a whole collection of teachings of krishna murti on insight and intelligence or intuition and so on that also is worth considering for one of our dialogues because we use these words many a time we hide behind these words also unknowingly or knowingly so all i can say friends is i thoroughly enjoy Uh, the interactions uh, for during the some of that um, uh, my own uh, technically my, i was unable to really join but i was able to hear most of it thanks thank you bye, bye. Good. goodbye sir shakti ji shakti ji yes sir yes sir my, my voice is reaching sir yes sir reaching, reaching very well yeah. Uh, you see i wanted to say something about this question of imagination which harshad ji raised in his when he was talking ah uh, this you see i am not on the experimental track but since i read a lot of krishna murti so he talks about subjective imagination and uh, he says that subjective imagination makes the mind dull and now i thought about it and i say what is subjective imagination and what is objective imagination objective imagination is like i am writing say a story about ravana or ram and i imagine in the incidents i imagine certain things and that is objective imagination i am not the part of that i am not the character there and uh, subjective imagination is that uh, i have met uh, my friend and now that friend is not with me and i am i am imagining that that friend is with me and we are talking we are holding hands uh so that is subjective imagination i enter into that and it is i found it true that the subjective imagination makes the mind tired dull 
objective imagination is doesn't do that. So that is one thing. I also uh, try to understand when Krishnamurti talks about chronological thought and psychological thought. And what I could infer from the reading is that the psychological thought is whenever my mind is wandering into future or past without intention or with intention and just flowing in that is generating pleasure or fear. So that is psychological thought. You see, if, if I need to go to uh, catch a train and I imagine my getting late or whatever it is, that is not psychological thought. But if I, if I think about some past event and feel pleasure or pain about it, uh, then it is because it is something which I am flowing, it is unnecessary. That was my understanding. It can be, you know, uh, wrong also. The last thing I would like to share is you see, I, I never felt while reading Krishnamurti or whatever little experiment uh, I could go into that he is, I cannot say that at this point he is true. And it, at this point, it is he's false. Because, uh, for example, uh, I happen to be an agnostic. I neither believe nor disbelieve in God. But when he talks about uh, the sacred, the nameless, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't say, uh, no, it is false. I, I, I learned from Annie Besant's book, she said, to Sanjeeva Rao that if you don't understand something which Krishnamurti is saying, put that thing on the shelf and go ahead with what you have understood. Right. So, just that I wanted to share. Thank you very much. Anand, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I mean, I had a question for Swamiji since he has left. I think I will, I will take back the question, sir. Uh, you could ask the next person. Dinesh, Dinesh Vagmaraji. Are you able to listen to me? Yes, sir. To me, today's subject is comes to the point that I want to unburden my old memories, which are creating pain and sorrow, and similar uh, problems, which I have faced in past. Those memories haunts me and create problems for me. Now, how to get rid of them? As far as thought is concerned, thought has got four components. What are those four components? One is intellectual part, another is sensations part, third is feeling parts, and fourth is emotions. Out of that, intellectual part is very easy to change. You just uh, understand what the other fellow is saying, and you can change that intellectual your understanding of that thing. But as far as sensation, feelings, and emotions are concerned, which are locked in the thought, which uh, th in those thoughts which are of past, those are not easy to change. How to change them? For that, as others have said, and J.K. has said, choiceless awareness is the instrument. But so you have to go for the choiceless awareness and try to change it. Either these words I have used only try to change it as if I am using the word self. But you have to be passive aware, passively aware as Swamiji has said. But there is another thing. You have to have energy available to you to change this. Science has already said that energy is proportional to power and time. So energy and time, they are related. Similarly, power is also related. So if you are having the free energy, then only with choiceless awareness, there can be an effective action, which will decide how much time that thought will 
you will be free from that uh, sorrow or pain or whatever it is or old hurt memories or whatever it is so one has to understand and how to tackle his emotions feelings and sensation part in the past thoughts for that as jk said first he has to remain with it and understand this energy phenomena which can only break the momentum of uh, that thought which is haunting him this is what my personal or subjective experience is which i wanted to share thank you you wanted to say that uh, the self is involved in all this and therefore uh, it is clinging to the particular uh, sensation and uh, creating some registration and uh, clinging to the memory itself and the, therefore it is being created do you want to say like this or something else what see monak sir what i want to say whatever uh, how 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 much I, however uh, means how much we uh, criticize uh, yourself or uh, i but initially it is involved in all this uh, phenomena unless you understand that which which others are talking of uh, intelligence unless you understand what that intelligence is and what that energy is how it functions you are the the uh, self will will not dissolve or it will not be diluted so first uh, definitely the i will be involved in all this thing that is what my personal experience is i will be involved self will be involved and slowly slowly if you don't have energy maybe somebody has got that energy to instantaneously uh, uh, be free from all this uh, past burdens but if he is not that energy available to him then uh, it will take time now how much time it will take that depends on the person so it is a subjective matter so initially self definitely will be involved okay harshad sir any any comment from you sir <coughs> uh yes uh, i would like to say that when you read or listen to somebody like krishnamurti or buddha and something really you sense that there is something behind that you become very curious and then you uh look inside you inside whatever is happening your thoughts feelings whatever if it, if you are able to do that and you feel that there is really is so very interesting to look just look not trying to be free from problem nothing like that just a curiosity to watch when that happens then a real a new movement starts in your life and uh, then you find that this is the most important thing in your life not about earning money or becoming famous or you know writing books and like that but just to watch what is happening uh, inside you and uh, not in order to be free and in that you gather more and more energy by just looking and then a kind of a cycle starts in your life and uh, then you never go back to that state where you felt very uh, resentful when somebody made a very bad comment about you so you are just looking and in that looking uh, learning happens uh, without trying to learn anything you know so i don't know whether this makes any sense to people who are listening but i am talking about the way i am that i am very curious if there is any problem i face i like to really look not want to be free from the problem but just want to look and uh, that is the real freedom to look so uh, it is very yes. difficult because uh, sometimes krishna ji says freedom is at the beginning so many people will say how how can it be you know um that how does a person gets freedom at the beginning to look everything but i think it happens uh, and if it happens 
then you say yes krishnamurti is right yeah okay can i say something here yes yeah to me one more thing is there uh, as uh, harsha sir right now already. said i want 7, to make comment already wagmare sir 728 already let shakti kumar say please attack okay shakti so, kumar please i said i just wanted to say something thank you arshad ji what you are saying because that is most important of course because it is much more important than reading and all only one thing you know pradeep ji was saying uh, about thinking and speaking you know pradeep ji if you if you write a song and if you are thinking the next line will not come so that means something is coming from unconscious you have to suspend the thinking otherwise if you keep on thinking you cannot write the next line just that thank you sir may i say one one sentence may i say yeah, please to... please please one sentence only sir please because what you are talking about that that inspiration under which that that feeling when you write a poetry or something happens or insight some sort of insight so that's a very different thing that's a very different thing you see that's a very who feel surprised afterwards whether it has come through me so this, that is th these are rare moments dinaji uh, please ke uh, modak can i modak say now last 730 more, more bagbare it is already 730 next time we will discuss it okay. last comment chronological time chronological time both are over please <laughs> end it please end it but you started late please no today it, please. modak please <laughs> end it two three minutes late no 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 yes. sir no sir no no time is left 730 ask okay. varma ji if you wanted to know the time exact time <laughs> what it is sir varma ji what is the time please tell him one is minute seven minute. Okay? So one you minute. can extend it no two three minutes because uh, we started late sir yeah, uh, le, le, let uh, me go out let me go out discuss it for <laughs> one hour more please you are you are just not paying attention to this you are just discussing discussion and discussion and if i interfere you make a point of it hmm. i just said it is 731 already please modak please end it please end it okay okay, okay please end okay. it thank you